Good morning YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are hanging out in the warm side of the greenhouse and yeah I just wanted to give you sort of a, a warm warm side update, a lowland update, whatever you want to call it depending on if you're orchids or nepenthes. But anyways fall is definitely in the air. Lots of things are coming out in spike and bloom I've been noticing. Um, there's definitely some maintenance I need to do in here. There's some dead leaves I got to trim off and some old spikes and stuff like that. If you don't keep up on it, you just kind of get behind on it. So anyways, I might pick while we work or while we do the video. Where can we start though? Like I say, lots of orchids are coming out. It's sherry baby season. I'm finding um, the sherry babies I have are starting to produce spikes. And they're definitely one of my favorite oncidiums. They, they smell so good. So we got a nice big spike on this one here. I have another spike coming out here. This is a Brassa Orchid. So I'm happy with that. This guy here is a little Epidendrum. He actually smells quite good too. I see one bloom is fading now on him. But um, yeah, he smells pretty good. That looks like sweet sugar back there. Culminaria is done. That's Culminaria Wildcat. My Brassidium Orchid is just like going crazy. It's got spikes coming out everywhere all over the place. They're like weaving in around the shelves and stuff like that. It's just, that thing is just huge with so many spikes right now. I don't even know. One, two, three, four, five, five or six spikes that I can see. So yeah, it doesn't have any kind of scent to it. I wish it did. And they're not quite as um, big as Brassa orchids themselves or Brassa blooms, but they are still nice size. So that's nice. Truncata is kind of here in your face. It's done really well this year. Um, I can't tell what's going on on the other side. Looks like a, a new leaf is unfurling and a new picture over there. There's a Vanda orchid you can see back there. Out in bloom, way back there. This guy here is quite neat. He blooms for me every year. Here's the tag. Not exactly a um, mainstream plant, but neat just the same. Kind of cool, yeah. My ant plants are doing really well. They've all grown quite nicely this summer. Um, got a few new ant ferns. So there's some of my original ant ferns. I really like the ant ferns. These ones down here are beautiful. I'm just going like everywhere for you. Look at this ant fern. So much new growth coming out since I've got it. So beautiful. They remind me of like caterpillars or slugs or something. What else do we have going on in here? Nepenthes are all doing really well. Bitchy eye up there with a hose in front of it. Uh, Nepenthes Chang in Longfolia. Ampularia. Echinostoma. Echinostoma is just fading. Pictures on this guy don't last very long. Um, what else do we got? I got a new little Clipiata. Not so little. He's pretty big size. And there's my original Clipiata in there. You can see an Epidendrum from the ground peeking up over the four foot shelf. That's kind of crazy. What else? My Ampularia Lime Twist is doing really nicely right here. We're really, really zoomed in. Let's zoom me back out. Holy cow. This root is from a vanilla orchid on the roof. It just is going crazy. What else do we got going on here? There's not much happening up top. They seem to be all like bloomed out for the summertime now that um, weather's getting a little bit cooler. Let's go down here for a minute. I found a couple orchids that were getting really shriveled. They were kind of tucked away and missed getting watered for a while. So, you know, if you have shrivel bulbs in on Oncidium, sitting them in water for just a couple days um, really perks them back up nicely. In the wild, they grow, they go um, for sometimes months without rain and they get quite shriveled. And all it takes is a few good days of rain and they're right back happy again. Now, if your bulbs are shriveled because you have root loss, this is not going to be a method that's going to help you at all. But if your roots are fine, they're okay in the water for a little while. And yeah, I think I even seen a spike down here somewhere. 
or two. But I can't see that now. So I'll take those out today. Um, another ant fern down here. We have got a lot of utricularia going on in this little place. We're really taking a liking to the utricularias. They're very nice. They're just so beautiful. Easy to grow. So lots of flowers for utricularias. And they're kind of like um, carnivorous orchid, right? Capensis road in the front. Those are broadleaf. My jewel orchid is sitting here under the light. It's looking really well. It's really good. It should bloom um, in a few months. So yeah, that's doing really well. What else do we got? We even got a seed pod on this utricularia here. And look how beautiful that is. I don't know if you can really see it. It's, they're tiny, but man, that is a bright blue purple flower. And so they sit in trays of water. There's not much to look at for their leaves. That one's formed a grassy mat. And this one will be as well. Some of them have like little lily pad type leaves. But for the most part, they're just a miniature species. Or, and they just, yeah, they, they bloom profusely. So, really nice. And if we go up here, we see another um, Oncidium spike over that way. A few slipper orchids under the light. I did get a few more lights this year I'm going to put in the greenhouse. This section here with all these plants, it gets pretty dark. So let's get you focused again. It gets pretty dark in the middle of winter. So I have another four foot light to go there. Um, I haven't got any LED lights out here yet. I've just been working with the fluorescent still. So I don't know, maybe that will change. Maybe it won't change, I don't know. Um, going on this side. Bellina in bloom. This guy smells really good. So I was just watering, as you can see, because I have some wet leaves on here. And here's an update for you. A few months back, I did a video on the crown rot that I had and how I had lost the, the main growth. Well, look at this. It's back. It's taken a while. We um, talked about crown rot and what causes it and how to avoid it. And I said that it was hanging beside this guy here, which the water nicely falls off of it. But this one was just in this wrong position and the water pooled in the crown and I lost it. Just just the crown and it didn't get too far and I and I basically saved it with cinnamon. If you want to see the, um, the main video for this plant, go back just, I don't know, two months maybe. And you'll see that video. But yes, there's an update for you. Other people have been asking about my cakey paste. And I found for orchids, it was basically a complete failure. They just um, grew these thick stalks on um, their stems and just kind of kept growing flowers, but drained a lot of energy from the plant. So I never really got much going for the cakey paste for orchids. But on the other hand, for carnivorous plants, for Nepenthes, it um, really seems to have worked in the growth isn't quite so um, crazy like with the orchids. So yeah, this is uh, Ampularia with a few little um, side nodules that have activated. So it seems promising. But yeah, I've, um, for now anyways, stopped kind of experimenting with the cakey paste and um, just left it at that. But I wasn't happy with the results for the orchids. So anyways, this was kind of what it did. This is what my, it did to my vanilla. Yeah, like what the what the hell is that? That's not a growth point. That's just like it's a nub. So a little disappointing with orchids. But anyways, people were asking, so now you know. I've just continued those experiments for now. I just got too busy with the summertime as well. And yeah, what else? Gosh. Nepenthes everywhere. Sun's coming out, that's nice. It's um, quite early in the morning. I don't think it's nine o'clock yet. Oh, here's a nice one. This is just a Cattleya hybrid. <clears throat> but look at that beauty. Whew. It's mounted. 
on a slab down there. It's just nothing but roots. It doesn't come off that slab. It's kind of stuck there. So, but yeah, this is the jungle I call the warm side of the greenhouse. And I hope you like this video. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.